The commodity that wars were waged over and world trade routes were formed around for thousands of years has come back in the spotlight once again with a truly unique venture company, a Venture 50 company actually, in Atlas Salt. We're about to take a deep dive into why investors should be taking notice of one of only two publicly traded salt companies in all of North America and see that the other has amassed a valuation of over $2 billion. The opportunity for Atlas with a valuation of about $175 million is one that you'll want to listen to. In order to do this, I'd like to welcome President Roland Howe, known as Mr. Salt himself, and CEO Patrick Laracy. Gentlemen, welcome. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. Good to be here. Absolutely. And great to have you two as well. Roland, I'd like to start with yourself because I'd like to start by asking a very simple question that I know is a lot on a lot of investors' minds right now. Why salt? You became president of Atlas in April of last year. The stock price has nearly quadrupled since then. You've accomplished a lot in your uh, career within the salt industry. Why did you choose to get involved with Atlas? And why has salt, the commodity, captured the attention of so many investors recently? It was an easy decision for me to come to salt because I've had a long career um, mining, producing, and uh, and in the salt business. So, uh, you know, this Great Atlantic Salt Project is a really a phenomenal asset. It's a, it's a really what we like to describe as advantaged asset. And you know, I used to run the Godrich Mine um, in Ontario on Lake Huron. And I ran that for over sixteen years, and it. We took it as a team. We took it from three and a half million to over seven and a half million tons annual production. Uh, and that is salt that's going to go and, and de-ice roads all around the Great Lake region. So, you know, the salt, the commodity that we're talking about here is one that's essential for winter maintenance in the uh, in the Northeast uh, US and Canada. You know, it's one that uh, the market is, is really tight. There's seven to 10 million tons of salt imported every year into this region. So, you know, those those sources are North Africa and Chile, long, 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 you know, journeys and supply chains. So, you know, our vision is that we can start producing salt on Newfoundland, on the west coast of Newfoundland, a short ship ride to uh, to uh, the east coast, and it, it it answers a lot of people's concerns about supply chain. Um, you know, COVID started, Ukraine has really pushed it harder, and everybody's thinking, well, you know. Am I secure? Is my supply chain secure for the things that I need? And uh, certainly salt when it comes to uh, keeping our highways safe in winter is, is an absolutely, it's an absolute requirement. And, you know, last winter there were some severe storms that really just exaggerated the, the issue that if you're not ready, if you don't prepare and you don't clear the roads, uh, you know, it, it just ca- causes everything to grind to a halt. So, you know, it's salt is like you said, wars have been fought over it and you need it for your body. Your body doesn't make it. We all enjoy it on our food as a flavor enhancer, but the bulk salt business is the one that we're targeting where uh, it, it, it's going to states, municipalities, contractors for uh, um, winter maintenance. Yeah, and you may brought up numerous important points there, but especially when it comes to supply chain and uh, of essential commodities across all North America, really across the world, that's a massive, massive uh, underline for a lot of these governments right now. And they're wanting to source that closer to home. There's no place better than in Newfoundland and in Canada. So I'd like to start talking more about Newfoundland, but more specifically about Atlas. Now that investors have a better understanding of the why behind investing in salt, I'd like to dive into the unique opportunity of Atlas Salt. For those who are hearing about your story for the first time, what has your team been building over in Newfoundland? Well, we've got a, a fantastic uh, deposit, salt deposit there. Uh, it's called the Great Atlantic Salt Deposit. It's one that Patrick and his team discovered um, while they were drilling for oil and gas. Uh, the, the, it's, the, the geology is great. It's, it's a massive homogeneous uh, deposit, over, uh, over a billion tons of salt there. I mean, salt appear, you know, it, it, it in, is in deposits that just stretch beyond the imagination. I mean, this is a, a great deposit and it's close to deep water. There's a port right there. So, you know, with salt, with moving bulk in, you know, in huge quantities, being able to get it onto water and ship it is a, is a real advantage. So the logistical advantages are there. It's Newfoundland is a very welcoming province. It's a safe province. Um, you know, they've voted recently in the top 10 of uh, provinces for 
inviting mining and 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 uh, providing for mining so you know we're happy to be there it's great that it's in newfoundland and the location geographically is, is second to none uh, what we're proposing is a salt mine a deep salt mine and the thing about salt is it's environmentally the, the salt mining operation and processing operation is very very simple uh, you mine it crush it screen it there's no tailings ponds there's no chemical processing um, there's no real residue. It's, you know, you, you get it ready and you ship it. Yeah. And Great Atlantic Project, you know, you speak to a lot of brokers and investors recently, especially those who have never heard of salt before, but you start speaking about the logistics of this. You start speaking about the feasibility of this. You start speaking about the fact of the shortfall you're talking about, seven to 10 million tons a year. It really starts to make sense for people very quickly why this could be such a big deal in that space or in this space i should say and you also spent i want to go back to this for a moment as well you spent 10 years running the mine at godrich uh where, that is for compass minerals and during the time of being there i believe you started as around 13 dollars a share it soared to 100 dollars us a share what's so special about great atlantic in terms of maybe comparing it to that godrich mine which is obviously one of the largest in north america but in terms of where you think this could actually go, given your experience of running a mine for so long? Yeah, I've actually been in the salt industry for over 30 years, and 16 of them was actually running that Godrich mine. Um, you know, that is a, really is the gold standard. Uh, it's got great geology. It's it's on Lake Huron, the, you know, the shipping all around that that region. And when Patrick kind of came to me about the, uh, with it, you know, this Great Atlantic Salt Project, it had all the same DNA that Godrich has, you know, and it, it, it just so many advantages that would come into play when we're marketing salt to that East Coast. Yeah, fantastic. And very excited to continue to hear this as yeah. are a lot of investors. If you just start looking at the boards and all this kind of stuff, there's a lot of momentum there and there's a lot of interest there as well. But Great Atlantic in and of itself is an incredible opportunity for investors. We just spoke about that. But there's also a massive potential renewable energy play through Fishel's Brook Salt Dome and other potential salt domes uh, that Atlas has claims to. Patrick, for those of you who are unaware of yourself, but also uh, potentially the salt caverns and how they come into play with renewable energy, can you explain the dividend currently that salt will be giving investors with Fishel's Brook while also giving investors an understanding of what Fishel's Brook is? Yeah, thanks, uh, Brandon. Um, we own the mineral rights to an area called Fishel's Brook. And in late 2021, we carried out a gravity survey, the first modern digital survey in that area to confirm the uh, geometry of the, of the Fishel's Brook salt zone. And it turns out, based on the gravity data, which is kind of the go-to uh, geophysical method for uh, looking for salt deposits, uh, the dome itself is quite large. It exceeds five square kilometers in aerial size. Uh, we know the salt there is at least 700 meters thick. The existing drilling in the dome itself uh, has never penetrated the base of the salt. So we know it's thicker th than that. So it's a, an appreciable salt dome. We've also located a secondary dome based on gravity data we call the Fishel's Brook East. Uh, when we acquired these mineral rights, we were looking towards potential fluid storage underground. And over the last couple of years, particularly the last 12 months, hydrogen, of course, is, is uh, coming to the fore in terms of a energy uh, transition uh, fuel source. And uh, there are many projects around the world which are at the early stages. There's one in Utah which is uh, being developed currently. The U.S. government is, is a big supporter of that project. It's going to be, I think, one of the first large-scale uh, hydrogen production sites. What we have going in Western Newfoundland is we have potential access to green energy in the form of wind. Uh, Newfoundland, particularly the west coast of Newfoundland, is one of the premier unexploited uh, wind opportunities in North America. So if you can couple green energy as the energy source to generate that hydrogen, it's a win-win situation from a clean energy project scenario. Now, where, where does the storage come in? 
Uh, anytime you produce energy, you really need a storage facility to balance the production of that energy with the consumption, because the consumption may have seasonality to it, and you got to balance that load. So underground storage uh, is ideal in that situation. There's nothing new about storing gas underground. The technology has been around for over 80 years, commonly used throughout Canada and the rest of the world. So we are going to spin out a brand new company and we're gonna to put together a management team and a board that has expertise in underground storage and wind energy and hydrogen. And with that uh, new management team, uh, they will solicit partnerships to utilize that storage most likely as a key component of a clean energy project. Yeah, that's fascinating when thinking about that because I know a lot of friends who are very much into renewable energy, uh, even into hydrogen and hearing that it can be stored underground using these salt caverns. I don't think many people realize that or know that. And the Biden administration obviously does because you, you mentioned that in Utah, they awarded them a $500 million in grant money. To, to make sure that comes into play. So clearly the U.S. is really pushing this. I can only imagine Canada will do the same. When it comes to that dividend for current shareholders, I just want to go back to that point really quickly here. If you are a current shareholder, we have there's no record date that has been set just yet. It's going to be sometime this year from your communication. How does that process work? I believe it's 25% dividend for all the current shareholders that you're getting this new spinoff company. Can you go over that really quickly? Yeah, we're, we're currently in the process with our legal team uh, to uh, get that spin out done as soon as possible. Uh, our AGM is slated for mid-August. A uh, shareholder approval will be required and we'll be updating the, the market fairly shortly on how that structure is going to look, look like. Atlas shareholders will receive uh, shares in Spinco uh, by virtue of holding shares in Atlas. Um, Atlas Salt itself will retain a very significant piece of Spinco. And of course, we're bringing in strategic uh, investors to finance Spinco, which will allow us again to put the proper team in place and to do the geotechnical work that will need to be done to add value to the project and make it attractive to one of those big players looking at a hydrogen project. Hydrogen projects are multi-billion dollar projects. I mean, these are no uh, fly-by-night operations. These are long-term uh, major industrial undertakings. Very exciting. I appreciate that. And for any investor who just needs a little bit more uh, to understand that, pretty much if you own shares in Atlas Salt, get ready because soon they'll be announced you're going to own shares of this new Spinco as well that can in its in and of itself be a massive massive opportunity uh, and well speaking of investors and speaking of shares an introduction to a company would never be complete without uh, a quick overview of its share structure and financial health what does your current capital structure look like and are you adequately cashed up for the near future as well yeah we're adequately cashed uh, we have 7.6 million dollars in the bank uh, our exp expected expenditure on the feasibility study for Great Atlantic Salt is going to come in at around 3.5 million. Uh, we have 80 million shares. I'm going to give you approximate numbers. <laughs> They're always changing. Uh, approximately 80 million shares outstanding. Uh, we have uh, over 7 million warrants uh, that remain outstanding. We expect most, if not all, of those will be exercised prior to Spinco. Uh, if so, that will generate another $5 million plus into the treasury. So we're in a very strong financial situation. Yeah, fan fantastic to hear, especially with those options and warrants and the money. Uh, obviously, that brings more money into the, the company as well. Well, gentlemen, I always like to end off our interviews with a very important question. What should investors be excited about coming down the pipeline from Atlas Salt in the coming weeks and months ahead? We just found out everything that has happened to date. What might be happening in the near future? Patrick, I'll start with yourself and then uh, Roland, I'll hear from you as well. Of course, the exciting thing is, is that we're in the, in the midst of the feasibility study. And uh, part of that is a drilling program to acquire geotechnical information that the engineers will use to design the actual mine. 
So shareholders can expect to hear more news on that front. Uh, but overall, Brandon, uh, sometimes the obvious is, bear, uh, is uh, worth bearing repeating. And the key thing about the Great Atlantic Salt Deposit is that we're, we're in the middle of the road salt market. So location number one, right? Uh, where we have access to infrastructure. And those two things are incredibly powerful. As well, your, your listeners should be aware that the salt market is a tendered market. So you bid on contracts from municipalities, as Roland has pointed out. Uh, so that allows us to enter this market. I mean, this is not a market that's locked up. This is a, a low bid market is going to get those contracts. So we have that fortunate position that not only do we have a great resource in the right location, we have the opportunity to enter the market. Fantastic. Great to hear. And, and Rule, I know it's harder as uh, Patrick's already chosen. Lots of things I'm sure you're excited about as well, but from yourself as well, just leave uh, investors off with one last thing here. You know, as we, as we uh, explain what we're doing and uh, describe the Great Atlantic Salt Project and, and the potential for Atlas Salt, um, the, the key things are we. This is very de-risked. I mean, we've tried many ways to uh, to uh, not make this work, and it, and it it's got so many advantages. I mean, the geology is de-risked. The processing is very simple. We've got the logistics. Environmentally, it's got a very small footprint. So, you know, as we explain this, there's a you know more and more interest. And uh, you know, last few years, Stone Canyon they spent 5.2 billion buying up salt mines and salt assets. And you know those numbers kind of make people start thinking about what's going on. So we do have we have got a, a special uh, corporate advisor just to make sure that if uh, if Atlas is in any way uh, approached, we we've got the right answers, we've got the right information to make the right decision for shareholder shareholder value. So that's our focus. Um, we're gonna you know we've got a great asset. We're gonna produce. I'll have a gold standard of mines here, but all other options are on the table too. Absolutely. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate it very much. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, many more of these interviews, diving into more aspects of the company. This was an introductory interview so that investors can have a better understanding of who Atlas Salt is, and of course, the two of you as well. So very excited to have those. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time, and I look forward to being able to speak to you again here in the near future as well. Thank thanks, you. Brandon. Yep, thanks.